we've had an astounding week in this country. And I want to, the Lord has given me a message this morning out of Ephesians chapter 6 that is true for all people, wherever they are, in every culture, all the time. And so, you know, we know that if, if I were to get up here and I would say, I'm going to start with John 3.16, and I'm going to read Scripture, and I read Scripture and then put my book down and then say, well, we're done. We know that that would be 100% biblical, correct? Now, I, I feel, I'm going to make a few thoughts about, about where we've been this past week, knowing that there will be, you know, there may be different people who have different persuasions about that, and that's fine. Remember we talked about Romans 14 recently. How I love that chapter because it's a chapter that says people uh, who love God a whole lot can have differing opinions about things, and it's okay. So if I say something that doesn't necessarily agree with every, you know what I say, that's fine. My, my purpose in, exp I, I feel compelled to at least express a thought or two about where we are. And you know, Jesus did that as well. Jesus addressed circumstances that he was faced with. And so, and I realize I'm not Jesus. But I, I know that we are living in an astounding times. And let me just say that if the results that appear to be that we're facing right now, if they are validated and there is a change of administration, then God is with us and He will move us forward. And He is a faithful God and God was not shocked. God was not knocked off His throne by things that happened this past week. And in my own opinion, if, if this, even this is a, a picture of God's consequences on us as a nation for turning our back on Him, then we know that the God will get us through it. And we trust Him no matter what happens. But I also want to pray diligently that if there is substantial, I mean, if, there's, if fair and square is fair and square, right? I mean, one of the things that's been a miracle about what this nation has been the peaceful transfer of power how many of us have had presidential elections? Well, that's not my guy. And what do we do? We support them. I believe this is a very different situation that we're facing this time. And I pray that if there is significant fraud, that it be discovered, that it be dealt with, and that God's hand would be upon that. Yes. Right. And, and we, th so that is my perspective. And by the way, I, I'm hurting in a lot of ways. And you know, I had to make a decision with, as Kay helped me to do, says, we need, like right now, to say, we are trusting God. We are praising God right now. We are putting things in His hands that we don't like, we don't understand. We're, we may be confused, we may be overwhelmed, but we choose to trust our God, knowing that He always moves in history. And He may move in ways that His ways, you know, Isaiah 55, His ways are not our ways, and, and, but we trust Him that He is with us. And like we started out this morning, I, had, I started with me on that. I will bless the Lord at all times. Amen. That's the way I started my day this morning. Lord, I come to praise Your name and to magnify Your goodness. And you will give your people, no matter what happens in the next couple of weeks or months, you will give your people triumphant, transcendent wisdom. And let us be people who throw off all fear in the name of Jesus. And let us be people who walk in the power and love of God. And let it not be just for us. Let us have a heart to be the first people who... Maybe they're for abortion. Maybe they believe that that's a choice that they have constitutionally guaranteed. Let us be the first people to welcome them. And if they see, if, they, if they're willing to consider otherwise. Because that's why we're here, right? right? I mean, the day I got saved, if God wanted to say, I don't want Knox to mess thing, anything up at all, he could have just pfft, taken me, vaporized me and taken me out of the way. That way I couldn't mess up what he had. But you know what? He left me here. And here I am. And I'm going to do the best I can with all the strength that God and all the breath that God puts in me. 
I wanted to start this morning with a song, This is the Air I Breathe. The reality of Jesus Christ living in me. And I pray that that's what resonates in us and compels us to say, Lord, how can I be a picture of Jesus? Now, I love church. I love what we're doing right now because of people who we, we resonate with the same thing. But I believe we're primary here to be a picture of people who don't resonate with us at all. They may say, I don't believe your book. Why should I believe your book? You know, I don't believe in your God. Well, that's why we're here. So let us be people who come in the power and the love and the goodness of our God and reflect, reflect Jesus to those people around us, whether they agree with us or not. And so I, I've, let me just, there's several things that I'm very, very, I'm, we could be, we were encouraged about, number one, no matter what happened, no matter how the situation plays out, our God says, you know what he, you know, he speaks over us? I know the plans that I have for you. I haven't gone anywhere. I'm still right here. I am your God. I will direct you and lead you, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. I'm glad, you know, you know I'm, this would be great if, if my mom called me today. My 98-year-old mom says, Knox, I know the thoughts I have for you, sir, and I'm your mom. Now, I would love that. I love my mom yes. who came to the Lord to know Jesus Christ at 97 years old because God is always looking to bring people into his kingdom. Yes. Now, I would love it if my mom said that, but you know what? I rejoice even more that my God speaks over you and uh, you, all of us and everybody in South Africa and the people in the United States and it's, as families and looks over your family and says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. I know the plans that, has, that I have for you, says, can we say this phrase together? Says the Lord. This is God speaking over us. He hasn't abandoned this country. I mean, if we go through some rough times because even our own terrible things that we've done, God will get us through. He is the God who is there. Thoughts of peace and not as evil, not of evil. And he has a future and a hope for you, for your family, for us as a nation and the nations of this world. I take great comfort in that. And he, you, know what's even, you know what he goes on to say at this? He says, and you will call upon me and I'm not going to hang up. I'm not going to turn my back on you. When you call on me, I will hear and God, how we call upon you. We need you, Jesus, Amen. in this hour. We need you. Then you will call upon me and pray to me, and I will listen to. It's very personal. He says, I will listen to you. My God tells me. I mean, the one who created the universe, he says he can listen to me. Lord, teach me to pray. I want to be like the disciples. And they came to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray. And Jesus didn't say, I'm too busy. What did he do? He immediately said, if you have a hunger to learn how to pray, I'm going to teach you to pray. I believe our God is teaching us how to pray in this hour for a mess that's bigger than me. Bigger, bigger than anybody. I believe we're beyond, I mean, as most of y'all know, about, we believe that God places people in government. And that's one of the things, there's always Nehemiah's, but this is, the mess we're in is far bigger than anything that could be fixed by right people in office. And we do want to pray for the right people in Austin and all that, but this is, we need God. We need the Lord in this nation. I'm sure South Africa needs the Lord there and every nation on the earth. And you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me. How? With all of your heart. My heart is hungering for God. You know, one of the very first prophecies I ever got was about 40 years ago. And it says, I will cause you to cry out after, after me and you will find me. And I tell you what, so Lord, I'm crying out to you Amen. and I know you will hear me. I know that you will lead us forward. You are always with us, and you, you're with us now, and you will be with us going forward. And we will seek you with all our heart. The other thing that I'm greatly encouraged about is Jesus spoke a parable to them. 
And what was this parable about? That men ought always, everybody say always, always pray and not lose heart. Okay? And it goes on to say that the, he, there's the parable of the unjust judge there. And uh, it, uh, uh, it talks about how, you know, here's this bad judge who, you know, didn't want to listen to this lady. Oh, you go away, you're bothering me. And it makes the contrast, but how about our, our God? Will He not grant justice to those who cry out to Him? He will. He will make this right in, in His way, in His time. And we will, we will pray. Will we pray? We know that the, the very sad situation in Ezekiel, and I believe in Isaiah as well, where the Lord was looking over the wreckage of Israel because Israel had turned their back on the Lord. And we knew that God made a search. And what was He searching for? He was looking for intercessors. And in this particular case, how many did He find? None. I believe God looks in this room and finds 50, 50 intercessors and finds millions of people in this nation who are crying out after Him. Mil yes, tens, hundreds of millions of people who are crying out after our God. So we will pray and God will hear. And you know what? To, to underscore this, this point, I believe that we are beyond simply legislative solutions. And again, I, I, was, I was mayor of Alito because God told me that's part of the way he wanted me to serve. I believe completely that we need godly people in places of public influence. But also know our only real hope right now is this. I don't know if you've probably most of you all have seen this flag. This is one of the flags of the Revolutionary War where the, this they realized that, you know, they would do what they could to get their, you know, their, their militia and their muskets and all that. But they realized that their only real way to success was what? Appeal. An appeal to the Lord God. This, this, this phrase was taken out of a, uh, a treatise by John Locke, I think two treatises of civil government, in which he was saying, if we don't get what's fair on this earth, we place our appeal to heaven, to the Lord God Almighty, who will always bring justice. It may take a while. It may, be, uh, it may not be exactly the way we thought it would be and the timing we want, but we, our appeal is to heaven. And that's what we do right now. We say, Lord, we, we place this in your hands, and we will trust you whatever comes in the weeks and months to come and the years to come, and we will follow you in Jesus' name. But we make our appeal to heaven. By the way, there is a, a, a one-page summary of where this came from i won't go into details but it's an interesting story if you if you'd like if you don't know about the appeal to heaven flag which is one of the flags that was used by our founding fathers there's several of the copies in there and you're welcome to to take one so we look to the lord god now also we're talking about prayer here and let me let me bring let me bring up something that that i don't have a complete answer to but uh, let me just preface something. You know, right now, we are praying, Lord, you see the circumstances we are in right now. But we're not just praying for what happens right now. We are praying for what you want to do in this nation for years and generations to come. Amen. You know, you know, Time will tell how many wonderful grandkids that Kay and I are blessed to have. I, I hope, you know. But I know right now, I'm praying for a couple guys who are about this tall. And I'm praying, Lord, not only we know that you're going to meet us in this moment, in this hour, and we will serve you no matter what happens, but we are crying out that the America that's coming and the generations and the decades to come will be freer and closer to God than what we enjoy now. And we thank you for the legacy that you've entrusted to us and pray that there be a resurgence of a nation turning itself to you. We know that America has never been perfect, but there's never been a nation like God that was started on an idea of the Bible and providing civil liberties for as many people as possible. And we've been bequeathed an incredible biblical legacy. And our hearts cry right now is don't get us out of this mess, this moment, God. Let this be something that projects into the future. Let there be a third great awakening or whatever it might be called. Let there be thousands and millions of people brought into the kingdom of God. I have thought for years that I am living to see a day when that happens. Amen. 
So I'm not just praying for what happens with who's going to be sitting in a particular seat in a few months. I'm also praying for what God wants to do in the future of this nation. I know you are too. And let me just bring this up. What about the people who were serving during World War II, who on December the 7th, the, everything changed. I know that many of those people were praying, God, help us in this crisis. What do we do with this situation? I'm sure they were like Hezekiah. Lord, here we are. We don't know what to do. This is bigger than us, but our eyes are on you. And I'm sure as they were praying in that situation that they were saying, God, help us right now. How can we handle this situation? But I bet those people were also praying, and Lord, don't just get us through this mess right now. God, let what you want to do in this nation resound forward into the generations and the decades ahead. Would you agree with me about that? I'm sure the people who went through the terrible tragedy of the Civil War, and we all believe, obviously, that slavery was a, the worst thing that this nation has ever done, aside from abortion, which is the worst, actually. But that was a terrible mistake that this nation made. And there was a terrible cost paid to rid our nation of that sin. We call it what it is, right? And I'm sure that people who were going through that heartache and the anguish of that national trial were praying, Lord, don't just get us through this mess right now. But what you, inherit, what you gave us from our previous generations, God, let it resound forward into the future. And I'm sure if we go back to the Revolutionary War, when there's huge sacrifices being made. We know the 56 men who pledged their lives in sacred honor. They paid a huge price for what they did. And I know that thousands of people were praying, God, we believe it's you're birthing something based on an idea that's out of your word and your Bible. God, help us prevail. God, help us get through this and help whatever you want to do in the future. Look into the future and God, do something that mankind has never seen before. You know, we can go back further to the era of, the, of Jonathan Edwards and the, the first and second great awakenings. We can go back as far, we can take this even further back to where the pilgrims, who had they had a very good idea of this, when, when William Bradford wrote in of Plymouth uh, Plantation, and here's this handful of people who come across a ship in 1620, they realized this isn't just about us. This is about what God wants to do in generations to come. If we be but what? Stepping stones. The pilgrims cherished a great hope and inward zeal of laying good foundations. How many of us want to lay a good foundation? Be part of a... I tell you, we have the best foundation. We can't thank God enough for the foundation that's been left before us. You know, I'm a concrete guy. I had nothing to do with laying that foundation, but I, I know a good foundation when I see it. And God has given us a legacy and a foundation to build on for Christ like no other nation outside of Israel. And God, and thank you for entrusting us with it. Help us in our day, in our small spheres of influence, to be part of your answer going forward. But William Bradford talked about they, they were laying good foundations for the preparation. And what were the foundations for? Hey, so we can come to America and we can make lots of money. Man, we can make a name for ourselves. What, would they, what did they come over? For the advance of the gospel of the kingdom of Christ. Even though we, they realized they were just a starting point. Even though we be just stepping stones. Are you willing to be a stepping stone? God, here we are, God. We're stepping stones. God, let Ellie's world, let the world of our, grandparents, our grandkiddos, let there be a legacy of Jesus that goes on, on and on. So my point is here, let me just ask you a question. And I, I'm sure we have all kind of scriptural questions that we don't know the answers, right? Here's my question. Do prayers expire? What about my prayers, your prayers today? God, don't just get us through this mess. Take this nation. With all our blemishes and faults, let us look more like Jesus 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. Just think of all the prayers prayed by millions of believers across, we're talking about across 400 years. I believe God's, I don't, you know, I don't think, I don't have a simple biblical answer to tie a ribbon on this, but I believe 
it's consistent with Scripture to say prayers that were prayed by these people. God may, God exists outside. He may still be hearing what they cried out. God, just let us put a foundation that looks like Jesus. Where we get it wrong, the pilgrims didn't get it all right. You know what they started out with? Socialism? <laughs> and after a few years, you know what they decided? This don't work. As a matter of fact, I, I'm, let me take a 30-second diversion here. One of the things that William Bradford wrote in On Plymouth Plant Foundation, he says, we're going to take the works of Plato and all those other real smart guys and throw it in the trash can. And they wrote these things as if they think that they're smarter than God. Hello. Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. So, but my point is here, I believe that there are, we are the beneficiary of something that we did not create. I believe that God will reward your faithfulness and mine for what we do in the period of time that God has given us. The, the decades that He's given us the privilege to be believers. But I believe that we're the beneficiary of centuries. Four centuries of prayer. And how God brings that on to play, I don't know, but I believe that He does. And I want to bring a just a a quick group of scriptures that touch on this. And how many of us have read scriptures and said, I have a partial understanding of what that's saying, but I know it's not complete, so Lord, help me. I think God loves that. God, just give me a glimmer of something here, and don't let me be stupid. You know, if I, if I take, I, I love, as a, limited flawed person I, I love isaiah 30 21 and you shall hear a voice behind you saying this is the way walk you in it whenever you turn to the right or the left the lord sees me going left hey Knox, let's get a little over this way you get Knox, you're getting a little off this way let's get back on track and i believe that that promise applies to people just let me just ask you a rhetorical question what does that promise apply to you and you shall hear a voice behind you saying this is the way walk ye in it whenever you turn to the right or the left to me it's implied by that promise that it applies when we're what going somewhere now i'm not saying that there's not times just sit and say lord i'm not going i'm not going anywhere until you tell me what to do i understand there's times like that but i love this promise because i believe god wants us to be out of the boat even if we don't understand everything, and we start moving with our best understanding, and God says, you're a little bit off track. Say, okay, Lord, show me. Help me stay on track. Help me get on track. So here, here's a verse that I want to share because it, I think it gives a glimmer of this question that I've asked. What about all the prayers that were prayed in the future from 1620, from 1776, from 1860, from 1941? To now. Do I understand it all? Nope. But I, can we consider this? Consider these verses together. Okay? Joshua chapter 6. What happens in that chapter? This is the chapter where the Lord instructed Joshua as to what the battle plan was to go into Jericho. Now, did God just not like the people in Jericho and decided to wipe them out? No, there was great evil. So evil, it even said that it defied the land. Now, I don't, that's another one I don't understand. But even the land, but they, we won't, we won't go through the litany of abominable things that they did. But I will say some of those abominable things we're doing now. But God's plan was to remove Jericho. Remember, Joshua got the plan, you know, from the captain of the Lord's host. Are you for us or with us? All we want to do, we want to, want you, we want to join you with your battle plan. So the, the Lord got bought the, gave the battle plan to Joshua that day. We know they marched around the city seven times. Seventh time they shouted, the walls came down. Now, in the same chapter, the last thing that we found out, find out in this chapter is where Joshua gave a prayer. 
And he was so concerned that this land, this area, had been defiled by all this abominations that had gone on there. That, and we believe that he, was, he must have been prompted by God to do this. And he says, at that time, and again, this is the end of Joshua chapter 6. The very, we, we see the conquest of uh, this city. At that time, Joshua invokes his curse. May the curse of the Lord fall on anyone who tries to rebuild the town of Jericho. At the cost of his firstborn son, he will lay his foundations. At the cost of his youngest, he will set up its gates. Now, this is sp spoken in about 1300 B.C. Okay? Give or take. Do we ever see anything more about this, this prayer again? Yes. 450 years later. 1 Kings chapter 16. Now, this is where Ahab, who we were told that he came, Ahab came into this area, and he wanted to, he wanted to build a temple for who? For Baal. And he set up an Asherah pole. He did, in fact, we're told, you know, I tell you what I want to hear when I cross the threshold into eternity is well done, good and faithful servant. And it's not something like this. He did more to provoke the anger of God than anybody before him. <laughs> By the way, let me just say again, I believe that there's, there's Ahabs in our day-to-day. -day. Yes. And I believe that those are who will say, I want the mercy of Jesus. I bow my heart before you. And we pray that many of those come into the kingdom of God and know the joy and the presence of our living Savior. So, and that should be our hope, right? I mean, I've, I've only really ultimately got one job assignments. Go you there for and tell people about what a great God we serve and how he wants all to come to. I'm not saying they all will, but I'm saying we need to have a heart that is open to that possibility and recognize and receive them and rejoice with them when that day comes. How many Pauls are out there? You know, the Lord didn't look down at Paul and say, hey, here's. Paul was a mess, right? And he was a very, anyway, we, we know the story, of, and I believe we'll see God's grace move in amazing ways. But anyway, here's, here's Ahab, and he sets up this uh, Asherah pole, and he did more to provoke the, uh, the God of uh, Israel than any other king of Israel before him. And we find out that also he came and it was during this rain that he decided there was one place he wanted to rebuild. What was that place? Jericho. Jericho. Now let me just summarize that what happened here was exactly what the Lord had put 450 years later. Now I have, I have some reticence about sharing these scriptures because I want to make it clear, 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 triple, quadruple clear, I don't think we should, I, I believe that this is something that God put on Joshua's heart to say. And it became fulfilled almost 500 years later. I'm not saying for a minute that we should be cursing anybody. We should be people who bless and not curse. Let us be, you remember Jesus sent out his disciples and one of the first things, oh Lord, we want to see fire come down. Jesus said, mm, no. We want to be people who go out in the love and goodness of the Lord. But I point this Scripture out as a glimpse of encouraging you and encouraging me that I believe in the mess that we're in, we serve a God who says, I'm with you, I have a plan for you, and I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. And he also encourages us to pray and not give up. That's what Jesus told the disciples. That prayer is one of my life. How many of y'all have life scriptures? Luke 18, 1 is one of mine. And Jesus was a par telling them a parable that at all times they should pray and what? Not give up. I believe God's going to give us a fortitude and endurance to pray and pray. You know, we, we came to, to, to Grady with with a very perplexing situation years ago. and said, well, Grady, we prayed and we fasted. What should we do? You know what he said? Pray and fast again. And we did. And guess what? 
God broke through. We will be people who pray and persist in this day. But I believe that there's something incredibly encouraging to me that not only God is encouraging us to pray in this hour, but I believe that there's something that we can do to, even if we don't understand it, we can say, thank God for the, you know, the cloud of witnesses up there are looking down upon what we do today out of us, paraphrasing out of Hebrews chapter 12, and we can't talk to them. I mean, you know, hey, Abraham, how's it going? I mean, we, we, what? But I believe that the ones who were American believers are looking down and say, Lord is still hearing our prayers. And I believe that there is a glimpse of that in these verses. Would you agree? There was something 450 years later that was the exact confirmation of what the Lord had told. That gives me great hope that we will be faithful in our day. But God has given us a legacy that we can say, thank you, Lord, that there is a, we can ride on what you've done in the past. I'm just going to, I'd like to end with this scripture because this is where we're headed next week. And I just want to give us, and we're going to talk about, I told you we're going to talk about Ephesians chapter 6 today. But we'll talk about Ephesians. <laughs> we'll continue this. I think there is resounding, empowering, encouraging faith that comes from this, 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 these scriptures that show us how we can do this to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. How many of us want to be stronger in the Lord and in the power of His might? Can we stand and pray together this morning? Father, we stand in the mighty, empowering, loving name of Jesus. And God, You know where we are. We may be at complete rest, and that's great. We may be struggling in certain ways. We may be overwhelmed. We may be perplexed. But we rest in the fact that you are the God of history. And we do make, as far as our nation, we make our appeal to heaven. And Father, that anything that needs to be done with lawyers and all that, God, we just place that in your hands and pray that for speedy, effective, supernatural wisdom, that if, there, if there's things that are need to be uncovered. God, we know that you, you are well able of doing that, Father. But ultimately, we rest in you, Father. We rest in the fact that you have plans for us that are good, that you look into our future and you say, I am with you now. I'm the God who was, who is, and is to come. I was with you before. I'm with you now, and I will be with you. What could we worry about? So we stand in our trust of you, God, in this day. And Father, it just encourages us when you say, I have plans for you, if you will find me when you seek with me with all your heart, God, we come run and we say, Lord, we're seeking you. We are responding to that invitation, God. We're here to say, Lord, oh, here I am, like the first grader. I know the hand, it's me, Lord. See, we come running, God, and we seek you with all our heart. And God, we believe that, God, that you're giving us encouragement about the power of prayer. And we beseech heaven, Father. If you need to correct our prayers or say, hey, let's tweak that, we, we rest in you. We acknowledge your sovereignty, Father. God, send us out, God, this week with your joy, with your power. And God, I pray, let us be strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. God, we don't look to you. We don't look to our knowledge, our understanding. We don't even look to government. God, we look to you to empower us to be what looks uh, your people should look like in our day. Father, we thank you for your goodness. God, let your kingdom come. God, let your will be done. God, we look to you. We trust you. We thank you for your goodness. And we all said, in Jesus' name, amen.